Good day, this is Professor Will, CBMD PhD. Today's Thursday, September 24th, 2020. It is 7.22 and 6 seconds a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this is a continuation of my microbiological research. So let's hop to it here. The character of a prokaryotic type of cell is expressed far more in physiology, dynamic pattern, than in morphology, static pattern, which underlies why bacterial morphologies and the like are so uninformative, even deceiving, phylogenetically. It also accounts for why the two prokaryotic cell types appear so similar upon superficial analysis at the molecular level. However, this impression of kinship between the two quickly evaporates. In their history, the two prokaryotic types have followed very different paths from time to time, have crossed leading to the occasional transfer of genes, especially early on, which accounts for much of the similarity often taken to signify specific relationship at the organismal level. Yet, in looking at the core functionality of the cell, the enormous gulf between archaea and eubacteria leaps out. Let us begin a comparison of the two types with their metabolisms, wherein the differences are relatively few, but still significant. The eubacteria are far and away the most metabolically diverse and versatile group of organisms on the planet. The metabolic uniqueness of the archaea is most prominently displayed in methanogenesis, a metabolism confined to the Uriarchida. The most interesting thing about archaeal metabolism may be the unique set of cofactors it employs, mainly in methanogenesis. To mention some, the C1 carriers coenzyme M methanolferin and methanolopterin F420, an electron carrier analogous to NADF 430, a nickel containing porphyrin, akin to heme, vitamin B12, and chlorophyll, methanolphenazine, a membrane bound carrier that functions like a quinone. Viewed metabolically, these cofactors are interesting, but not all that unusual in the reaction types that catalyze. What is unusual and intriguing, however, are the biosynthesis, the study of which is still in its beginning phases. While the pathways in archaeal cofactors synthesize themselves tend to be fairly standard in the chemical sense, the enzymes catalyzing the reactions more often than not have no homologs outside of the archaea. The unity of biochemistry we have known since historical times may be as much a matter of evolutionary convergence on common biochemical themes as it is retention of ancestral metabolic waves. Archaeal membrane structure is unique as well. It is based upon the ether link branch chain lipids, whereas in the eubacterial and eukaryotic cases, straight chain ester link lipids predominate. In methanobacterial species, however, walls compromise pseudomerin, a compound that is, the name suggests, resembles eubacterial merin. Yet the sugars from which the murin and pseudomurin are built are largely different, and when the biosynthetic mechanisms involved in the wall formation are considered, it is clear that the murin and pseudomurin are another example of biochemical convergence. Good day, this is Professor Will, CBMD, PhD on Microbiology, Bioinformatics, and Computer Science. We well, hope you enjoyed listening. Until next time, have a great day.